The puzzle movie opens with musical puzzle box little fugue in G minor performed by Tatiana Nikolaeva. Hey, oh sh sorry. Never gonna argue with an opening shot of Katherine Hahn, also relatable and also a really quick way of letting us know when this is taking place. Oh, but also that. And with me now is Connecticut Governor Claire DeBella. Hey, that's my state. I mean, not me. I, I would dox myself. Connecticut? What? what what's that anyway? Our governor is Ned Lamont. Genius always looks like insanity at first, though, right? On the first watch, it seems like Lionel is truly defending Miles, but on subsequent watches, you know he's really saying it more to convince himself. Genius or insanity? Uber for biospheres. I love that Ryan sort of puts the question out there, but it wasn't genius or idiot, it was genius or insanity. Because insanity in this context is something we all still respect for some reason. Free thinkers thinking outside the box, they're disruptors. And the Crypto Kids app paid for this building. And there's the crux for me. It ends up being a stupid idea because Miles is stupid, but it also happens to be evil. I don't care, anything involving kids and crypto is evil. It's like saying puppy equals coats. You don't need the specifics to know you're dealing with the DeVille. Just because something works doesn't mean it was smart. She's afraid that I will tweet an ethnic slur again. Another one of those times where everything seems too on the nose, but dang, it just isn't. A COVID house party and that aloof celebrity racism. Honestly, the only thing less believable is that Peg is successful at keeping her phone away from her. Hi, Peg. Oh, no, Peg's putting out a fire. Shirt. Another fire bird. Got no, no. to stay off the Twitter. It's nothing like that. It's fine. It's these little moments that really make me appreciate what Ryan does with his works. That's just a funny one-off joke based on an idiom, but it's literal. And then you remember that Peg asked the fire spinner to stop, and even the silly joke was set up. Please stop fire spinning inside. Stereogram. The thing about stereograms is that none of you knew they were called anything other than magic eyes, and that's okay. We all learned something new today. It's set up for a, a made in one. Should I? Do it, Kasparov. Fun fact, Kasparov is a chess player. Another thing you didn't know. But actually, I love that some of the people Miles considers his inner circle are classically intelligent. Not that knowing Gary Kasparov as a Russian grandmaster is like an IQ marker, but it implies worldliness, as does knowing what a mate in one even is. Also, the queen takes out the king, eh? I mean, Helen isn't technically the queen, but you get the point. So it can't it's be, tic -tac -tac thank you for contributing, Bertie. I said some. Bertie was at least smart enough to hire Peg. The split screen stuff is fun regardless, but the anti-woke guy randomly leaning in, aces. It's a compass. At the same time, Duke's mom is crushing them all, and there's nothing telling me she's a wild success like the rest of them. This is Boss Little Fugue in G minor. You sure? <laughs> yeah, he's sure, Peg. Still, Yo-Yo Ma wasn't the cameo I expected. And like, yeah, that's the movie, right? I mean, the movie opens with Box Fugue letting us know we're starting this puzzle, and then once Helen is shot, we restart the movie and see it from a different perspective. It's layered on top of itself. A whole new tune. This can't Shazam, it's a lamp. <laughs> Penny Lane, she never ceases to impress. You could tell she had fun with this part. That first one's a Fibonacci sequence. Uma is on fire. I'm sorry, is this called the Steel Onion? What's that? I don't know. Hear me out. Road Trip Buddy Comedy with these two. Ingenuity. It's also a really perfect representation of Helen, or even, if she were alive, Andy's relationship with Miles. Everyone else plays the game and solves the puzzles to keep Miles happy. And Helen doesn't care and doesn't need to play his stupid game, so she gets the hammer. I know who Big Red is. Natasha Leone is always a win. Has been since I saw Slums of Beverly Hills. You're the imposter. We all know it. Look, Blanc may be the best, but he's never going to get one over on Jessica Fletcher. Also, rest in peace, Angela Lansbury and Stephen Sondheim, two of the greats who added so much to this genre. I thought she'd be better at this. He's not, because the game's too simple and not dangerous enough. It's already all being set up. That's hyperbole. So, when Knives Out, we had a special win counter just for Blanc's let's say Blancisms, and I think we're gonna need it again, but this time let's not limit it to just what comes out of his mouth, because yes, he really makes love to the word hyperbole, but the fez on his head while in the bath is doing just so, so much for me here. <laughs> That's a fun title card smash cut. It's refreshing when a movie knows exactly what it is. Look at that dapper-ass mask. Blanc is just all class. Hi, Peg. Hi. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. So obviously we all noticed Birdie's just absolutely perfect for her mask, but it's on the fourth or fifth viewing that you start to notice the little stuff, like Claire being the nice one who offers to help Peg and Peg's little, yes please, which is funny enough, but also of course Claire doesn't actually help her because she's just the nice one in air quotes. She feigns being the down to earth one for her political career when she's really just another golden teat hanger on. And her entire character screams that's her in the background constantly. Fixing her mask when she's reminded she's a governor, looking down her shirt for a smell test, I assume. So let's keep an eye on all that. Oh, oh, absolutely not. Yeah, there are just some people you can tell are dripping with Rona. Fortunately, it's usually the acquaintances trying to hug you, makes it easy. 
I like to think this is just actually Ethan Hawke and Miles paid him a million dollars to do this. No pineapple on that, right? Duke don't dance with pineapple. Chekhov's food allergy. You're good. Have a great trip, everyone. I mean, knowing how Miles is, there's a possibility he's just rich enough to have someone with the cure come inoculate everyone, but more likely is that it's hydroxymectin uvectin. But also the little joke is funny, and all they really had to do was isolate for a few weeks before. If looks could, I don't know, kill, make you fall in love, or maybe run away, very few people have owned an entrance like Janelle just did. And the way Blanc is already studying all of them to see their reactions to seeing Andy alive, you know me, especially if you watch my perfect getaway video. I love a double meaning. I love a trick that's only a trick until you know it's a trick and then it gets new meaning. A simple insert of Andy gripping the railing. She already seems angry, so she's probably gripping it in anger. Nope, she's terrified and hates boats. Claire's true feelings on her face again. I cannot overstate my gratitude for so this. Happy to meet Andy. Love that long pause, because technically he is meeting Andy for the first time. His awe at her coming works the same as his awe at her being alive. Ultra fun moment on the second watch. Somebody he murdered has just shown up at his party. Fully abbreviate this moment. <laughs> the look from Beg. I'll be honest, I didn't catch them all, but even if I had caught them, like this one, it's easy to just dismiss it as a billionaire speak. Of course they'd make up their own words. I'm not here. Trooper Wagner. Look, I know he's in every one of Ryan's movies, but in the Blanc verse, that's Trooper Wagner. I have occasionally put on the dog in my lap. At first I thought Whiskey just wanted Duke to face her, but actually she's been walking between the boards and she wanted Duke to as well? What kind of staff does it take to run a place like this? Normally, like 50. Perfect. Gross unwashed masses. Hashtag free RoboDog. That should encourage them to spare me during the war, right? Is that a motor car? I just don't think I could pull off the neck scarf thing, but you know who can. I want the boxes are open. Is there any way to reset them? Hang on. Someone reset the box. An idiot, just dumb as rocks. Blanc has to rub his nose in the solution. Now that's an entrance. Gotta keep up that modesty, Claire. And she's rightfully afraid of the sun and did an awful job applying sunscreen, as we'll see later. You remember that night you almost pancaked me? Chekhov's pancakes, I think. On the road outside right Anderson here. Cooper's birthday. It comes off weird, but the more we hang out with Miles, the weirder he is, so this just kind of slips by. You never know when shit's gonna go down. Somehow I hate everything about him and love everything about him at the same time. God, I love Blanc's swimming costume. Actually gives new meaning to swim suit. I was the one on magazines. He was nobody. Did you catch it? Here, watch it again. Still no? Yeah, that's the tape recorder Helen throws into Bertie's bag. No cheats! He was this little thing in my hand. I preferred that. Ryan is never subtle about his indictment of the... I don't know, elites, for lack of a less fraught word. But even in his indictment, you get the sense that it's not black and white. Like, Birdie definitely sucks, but so does Miles. This has been so insightful. What first drew you all together? I think disruptors recognize each other. Even this deflection so he doesn't have to talk about Andy bringing them all together is wicked annoying. See, Peg gets it. And what about Claire? You know, soccer mom in beige. I can't tell if this movie is trying to say Claire is frumpy or if it's just Miles being a jerk, but either way, it's adorable to try and pretend like Katherine Hahn is in a regulation hottie, sweated eye makeup and frizzy hair and all. The infraction point. Cut that one too, and there's no way around it. He meant inflection, but infraction is breaking rules, which disruptors, still tricky. This look from Peg that says, oh, please let them have it. Went on Oprah and compared herself to Harriet Tubman. In spirit. I think what truly works so well with Birdie is that the more ridiculous she gets, the more you believe it. For hawking rhino horn boner pills to teenage boys. With zero rhino on those pills. I love that he thought that was the issue. Miles Bryan's golden titties. <laughs> he closes his robe after his tamales were mentioned. Oh shoot, that line hasn't happened yet, has it? It's a dangerous thing to mistake speaking without thought for speaking the truth. Even when Blanc is playing the fool so they'll all spill their guts, he can't help himself but drop a life lesson bomb on Birdie's brain. Joseph Gordon-Levitt's dong is always a win. What? His dong was composed by Philip Glass. What? This is a smokeless garden. No. This is a smokeless garden. And yeah, he plays the fool a lot, but this moment is real, and he's just worried about getting caught smoking like an eighth grader behind the Cumberland Farms. Number 207 by artist Mark Rothko is right there, and it's upside down, which really is perfect for Miles. Now we got the males. Ah, there he is. Racist or just stupid? Who could say? I got wool in 16. He likes it heavy on the feet. Serve it up neat. That's true, but if you want that real smoky flavor, go for some Laphroaig and then pour it out and grab some Oban or Balvenie and just eat a burnt match instead. Alibari! 
Oh, that's a uh, Jeremy Renner's small batch hot sauce. Chekhov's hot sauce, or uh, uh, Renner's Chekhov's hot sauce. Renov's, Chenner's, whatever. She uses the hot sauce later for the thing. You know, pick your poison. On the nose, Miles. I'm on the nose. It's like having a Che poster in your dorm room. So you're saying that if I had like actual Brad Pitt and Edward Norton in my dorm room holding soap, it wouldn't be cliche? Or would I need something insane like Norton's head on Pitt's body? Say like this. More Beatles references for Birdie, pretty apropos. You'd put the idiot switch and the fool on the hill. Ooh, Peg tried to start the party early. This moment with Helen truly appreciating the Mona Lisa really sells her choice in the end to burn it. It's clear that she wouldn't want to. It's a classic. Never change, guy. Mentioned in the same breath as the Mona Lisa, forever. You should be careful what you wish for. Call it clear with a K. Hey, sometimes it works. Mortal Kombat is iconic. Other times you blow up your house. The whole glass onion is powered by clear. This once again shows how much of a dum-dum he is. Sure, he's a grifter, but he also truly believes his own grift. He thinks it's not dangerous because he doesn't want it to be. Honestly, that kind of delusion sounds pretty great. Am I right, Cypher? You're gonna get somebody killed. Kill somebody, he's gonna kill somebody. I've hidden clues. Some may be helpful, some may misdirect. They already have. Daryl, for instance, just a misdirection. Normie. I don't actually need an iPad. I love that we don't know if Blanc is throwing them off the scent or was just actually excited about the possibility of a prize. I wish started already, is it? Well, the murder hasn't happened. It was Birdie. For you stealing her signature Ren Diamond. And it's all solved. Great movie. Next week is a movie also about a murder and stuff. What? Oh, it's just like the first movie where the mystery is solved halfway through? Oh, I've already seen this movie. More than once, you say. Hmm. Also, this denouement a third of the way through the movie is such a classic Ryan Johnson expectation subversion. To be clear, I mean, I didn't know what a blood diamond was. I don't know, Leo did that accent back in 2006. Celeb brain though, fair enough. Oh. <laughs> He's not wrong, it is pretty cool. Most satisfying, box sized <laughs> He's really laying it on, which could totally just be Blanc being sincere, but it also works to mock Miles. I'm not sure he realizes Miles is an idiot yet, so it's probably just the former. Densely layered, but in reality, the center is in plain sight. Get it? It's Miles. He's clearly the bad guy, but it's so clear we all think it's gotta be someone else. They tore it down a year after that. And the details are always in plain sight. Mm -hmm. Huh. So a phone really does do that. A phone dings, it closes up. Everyone gets a custom drink in a custom glass, except Peg, who doesn't even get a glass, just a solo cup she has to write her own name on. It definitely checks out. I'm not even sure he noticed she was there. Duke! Hey, buddy. Your Gucci flats telling us Valentino. There it is. She's not stupid. She just only knows about the stuff she cares about, which may be worse. I don't know. I, I don't judge. Except sometimes. My life was taken away from me. Even Helen is speaking truth right to their faces. As Andy, her life was literally taken away from her. We're all playing the same game here, honey. You lost. Honesty. Painful honesty. Tight misdirect. Now two people have bumped into him. It changes things, right? That sure does. In ways you can't even imagine, Duke. Keep the faith. The biggest misdirect in the entire movie is the misdirect misdirect of the Mona Lisa glass slamming closed constantly. We're just waiting for it to shoot some piece of glass into someone's neck or someone's hand to get chopped off by it, but it never does. Love it. It's there, but you don't notice it because you're trying to do what Miles just said to look at Bertie's dress spin. It works on literally everyone, including us. I'm afraid Mr. Cody is, is dead. Ha, finally Bond gets his revenge on Hinks. Governor jets off to Greece in a pandemic with a men's rights YouTuber who dies! Oh, Claire, when did dead people popping up ever hurt a political career? Ah, the Edward Norton misdirect. One of his first big roles was one. It's not a spoiler if I don't say what the movie is, but it's definitely before the other one you're thinking about. He picked up mine. Dang unreliable narrators, or actors, cinematographers, and video editors. I saw it. Love that Miles runs away because he has the phone in his back pocket. This evening it was gone. When was that? Okay, cards on the table. I noticed that Miles was touching his own back the second time through, and I still didn't realize that it was when he took his gun. You can even hear that familiar sound of hand on metal. <laughs> you can also very clearly see him putting it in the ice, but you just don't notice. Oh, fiddlesticks. What a murder mystery moment, especially because it's literally Miles ripping off a cliche about murder mysteries. Not today. Wait, 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 wait. Gosh, I love Edward Norton. Him playing a dumb dumb is really amazing because of how many times he's played geniuses. Also, I mean, he went to Yale, which is not nothing. Helen! If you'd asked me, I'd have said they changed the movie on my second viewing because I did not catch that he called her Helen. Artistically pleasing attempted murder. Renner making us tear up again. 
This reveal that no one stayed in the dining room. If they'd stayed, they'd know the only one who wasn't there was Miles, but this crew just loves making everything harder for themselves. Here's our fugue playing again, restarting the story, the first time knocking on a black door, this time on a white door. Phew! Yeah, you'd be right for Blanc. I really hope Blanc has to solve a murder on one of their vacations together, because I am very ready to watch this dynamic. Hoping next Benoit Blanc mystery is in a Swiss ski chalet. I teach third grade, so a lot of zooming. Shout out to teachers who had to zoom teach. Can't imagine how rough that was. Nobody writes back anything, and then the next day she's dead with sleeping pills in her system? I searched every inch of every room in her house, and guess what wasn't there? Sleeping envelope. pills. Oh, right. The envelope. Totally, totally. We're, up. We're on the same page, Blanc. Cut from the same cloth. I'm not Batman. Not yet, at least, but you never know. Those multis do be versing. Buttress them. I'm sorry, what was that word? Buttress now? Yes. Say it one more time. Buttress. Nice. That feels like a good cinema wins word of the week. <laughs> Look at that smirk. Well, my goodness. Yeah, I'd imagine when Janelle Monet approaches you, it evokes a response regardless of preferences. Really lay on some Southern hokum. I love these moments that let us know Blanc is self-aware to a point that his, oh goodness me, oh my, will I never, is part of his skill set to put people at ease and get more out of them. Miles Braun is not an idiot. Best line in the movie. Even the greatest detective in the world, other than Batman, just knows deep down that a billionaire can't be an idiot. It's just ingrained in our culture. After seeing some unraveling recently, I'd wager my net worth against theirs that more of them than you think aren't the brightest tools at the picnic. <laughs> Yikes. And yet, yeah, that checks out. It's talked about in the same breath as the Mona Lisa. Forever. Follow your dreams, kids. If it can happen to Miles, it can happen to you. Miles meets some sketchy Norwegian scientists at an ayahuasca ceremony in Peru. Oh goodness, that's so perfect. I hate all scammers and grifters, but honestly, it's good to know that the ultra-rich aren't safe from Scandinavian hucksters either. Thing is, TJ Mackey wouldn't miss the shop. My gosh, I just realized he has the armband. Of all the guys to fashion yourself after, a Manosphere grifter with dark secrets is pretty great. It's also right on target. Miles only steals ideas. Again, perfect that Andy's email is her name and Miles is alpha at their domain. I doubt he even asked. Wait, what do you mean you can't let me? Steve Jobs doesn't ask for permission. My favorite thing is how absolutely idiotic the crypto napkin is. Even more idiotic than anything Theranos ever did. Try a funnel next time, doofuses. Know what's funny? Andy took the picture of the envelope the very second she found it. There's the bookcase still on the ground. Let this be a lesson to you. Do not gloat about the piece of evidence you found. I'm very bad at dumb things. Literally the opposite of me. I'm only good at dumb things. But damn it, I'm very good at them. You shouldn't be here. But she's disrupting. I thought y'all loved that stuff. That is your chance to snoop. 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 <laughs> what? I read your court transcripts and you got shanked. It works really well that Andy would be annoyed with everyone so she wouldn't be talking much and Helen is just plain terrified at slipping up. Like if I'm gonna go into politics eventually. Nothing like the content creator to disruptor to Congress pipeline. <sighs> Bleak. Okay. Promise I have no ambitions for office. Jared Leto's hard kombucha. That's what is there? That's 9% alcohol or so get off. 9%? That definitely makes for Mormon time. Hey, it's the Matisse in the bathroom. I can handle the Matisse in the bathroom. Partner will say, you need to stop. I love that post-fugue, Miles is accidentally actually hyping Helen up to speak her mind when her partner Blanc is telling her to stop. I think maybe you should take up drinking. You're just killing it. <laughs> Compliments and life advice. Serena stays so still except for a little eye-widening. And apparently Serena Williams is the exception to the rule that Blanc set in Knives Out that nobody has read Gravity's Rainbow. Please tell me you did not think sweatshops are where they make sweatpants. What I love about this is that it's one of Birdie's more innocent and understandable mistakes, at least in a semantics way with sweatpants sweatshop, and yet it has by far the biggest consequences. My goodness, the smirk was always there, but with new context, it seems like a humongous, obvious smile. Miles was literally describing Andy slash Helen when talking about the Mona Lisa earlier. Is she happy? Is she sad? Is it something else? Huh, must have borrowed that notebook from Officer Nicholas Angel. You know what? Running not my type, but yeah, running hot. Balls! <laughs> it's almost like his accent slipped. Dead. I die. It hides, but behind mind numbing obvious clarity. Knowing you're caught is one thing. Knowing the guy who caught you also thinks you're an idiot would sting. There goes Claire again, realizing she's not press ready. Swim in the Ionian Sea. That is the Aegean Sea. Oh yeah, it is.
That one might be my favorite because it doesn't seem like a big deal. Each sea is on one side of Greece. But if you were standing in Montauk and said, go swim in the Long Island Sound, maybe you wouldn't notice it first if someone said it confidently, but once it was pointed out, you'd respond exactly like Claire. His grasp of disruption theory is remedial at best. The reveal that Blanc actually knows what being a disruptor is and Miles doesn't. That's why Blanc asked him about it to see if he was actually just full of crap and keep him talking. Miles Braun is an idiot. Blanc could probably do the denouement without dressing Miles down, but why would he want to? It's so much stupider than that, it, you vainglorious buffoon. A veritable minefield of malapropisms. I also enjoy that Blanc is likely using words that Miles doesn't know anymore. Vainglorious, malapropisms, altruism. What did we all actually see? The funniest part is that he literally used the age-old look over there trick, and it worked. What is reality? <laughs> How is that not a meme yet? Can we make it one? Miles has killed her twice. That's exactly what he's thinking. So dumb, it's brilliant. No! It's just dumb! Even now, Bertie is trying to believe the lie of Miles Braun, and Blanc is utterly offended by how dumb it all is. You dim-witted, brainless jackass! <laughs> Miles' facial response. Stole the whole idea from me. I mean, it's pretty much all he's got. He didn't burn it or anything? The way he moves his jaw, it hadn't occurred to him he could burn it. <laughs> Lionel, weren't you paying attention? Blanc just said he's stolen every idea. Totally circumspective evidence. It's even funnier because he thinks of himself as a big boy. He heard someone say circumspective once, and it sounds a little like circumstantial, so he probably assumed it was just a fancier way of saying it. It's, it's a callback that only Blanc would get. Well, and us. And I told her who they were. Shitheads. Offer you some courage. Sort of obvious, but I still love it. That's where Helen put the drink down when Blanc told her to stay sharp. And then Blanc specifically walked over there so he could hand it to her. The baseball in Knives Out stands alone. Its journey is immaculate. But this rock is also pretty great. Miles arrogantly and carelessly throws it to Blanc to show off, and then later Blanc hands it to Helen to help destroy Miles. Also can't say for sure, but I think that's the same rock on Andy's desk in the flashback. Straight. Look, I'm not saying drinking can be like a superpower, but Helen made it clear she doesn't drink. Oh no, I don't drink. But had great success in her speech after all that Leto booch, and now she's gonna bring down the house. <laughs> Goodness, the violins are going bananas and I love it. <laughs> she needed that more than most. Love you, Birdie. Fun fact, Jessica Hennick wasn't supposed to throw that piece right then. It was just a practice run, but she did, and that's why she looks right into the camera. Just wanna say, kids, don't try this at home. You wouldn't believe how easy it is for shattering slash exploding glass to slice up your bare legs. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Where is she going? Ah, smoke him if you got him. Blanc finally doesn't have to feel bad about his cigar. Okay, stop! Stop. Enough. The gall of the powerful will never not blow my mind. You murdered her sister. What, are you gonna call for civility next? Hindenburg. Look, I don't know the exact science on this. My engineering friends say it's a little... Not correct, but you know, we all know about the Hindenburg, so it was a decent attempt and the average Joe isn't gonna think twice, cause explosions. Disruption. <laughs> this is a smokeless guard. Fuck it, These guys get it. Another running gag, everyone throwing Miles' disruption back at his face. I love a good surprised Pikachu face. It would be surprising to know you're about to be part of destroying a piece of history. If you're doing anything but cheering in this moment, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Money is the only language the ultra wealthy speak. There is nothing else Helen could do to hurt Miles. Even murdering him, he'd have his legacy. So Helen decided to use his language. Look, Miles is an asshat, but that is a deep squat. Good for you, bro. Edward Norton is always a win. Your feel of the future just barbecued the world's most famous painting. And I'd say that's disruption, at least Miles' middling definition. She broke the system, the Miles system. <laughs> and just a few more for Claire, cause she scoffs like a queen. Miles, <laughs> we'll be committed. <laughs> that's why I called. <laughs> Catherine Hahn is always a win. Peg, you're being so subtle. <laughs> I clearly saw him grab Duke's gun. I saw him driving away from Mandy's house the night she was killed. This is a moment of vindication, but it's not a moment of redemption for these poopy heads. They're still chasing a golden teat, it's just not with Miles anymore. Kinda appreciate how bleak it is. You shit. <laughs> okay, you're really winning me over in the final hour here. Did you get the son of a bitch? Yeah. She really did. Okay, the hands, the pose. Is she smiling? Is she sad? Who could say? Well, I could. She's happy to have disrupted Miles Braun. Janelle Monet Lisa. And as always, loving these actor portraits.
people might ask, why did Andy team up with Miles in the first place? Why didn't they all see through him? And the answer is charm and charisma and confidence. No offense to talented salespeople, but just because they can convince people to trust them doesn't mean they're smart or even not a complete and total moron. I've known both types, so it can go either way. Some people who could sell a ketchup popsicle to a woman in white gloves could also teach calculus. Others couldn't find their way out of a glass onion. And like Blanc lays out in our society, we automatically assume wealth equals brains, and it just isn't true. It's similar to how some Americans, myself included, unfairly drop a person's intelligence in our heads when they hear broken English. Which is ridiculous, because the odds are that the person you're judging speaks at least one more language than you. Anyway, this movie is about preconceptions and making judgments about people based on our own quick observations. Miles is a genius, Andy is supercilious and angry, Birdie is shallow, Whiskey has no future aspirations, Duke is prejudiced against Pineapple, and Lionel and Claire are the decent and kind ones when actually they're the two that signed off on the dangerous fuel. We also assume Duke is a big dumb reactionary when he's actually decently cunning and potentially sex positive? Hard to say. Oh, and that Blanc doesn't know what's going on when he's 15 steps ahead of everyone, honestly, to his own detriment. But Blanc is the one we should have suspected, and I'm sure lots of us did. He's the one that really ties it all together. Not to diminish Janelle Monet because her dual roles are a huge part of why this movie is so great. But you remember The Fugitive? Harrison Ford gets framed for murder and Tommy Lee Jones has to hunt him down. And then five years later, we got U.S. Marshals with Tommy Lee Jones again, but an entirely new cast around him? And he didn't need to watch Fugitive to understand U.S. Marshals, but definitely add it to it? That's what we have here. You take a great character from one story and you put them in another. It's a staple of mysteries and TV shows, but it's an underused device in film. We don't always need a through story, just the same characters. Sometimes we just like being in the same world, probably why Rogue One and Andor are some of the best Star Wars media. And good old Craig Blanc really does transcend his own series. The more eccentric he gets, the more I'm into it. The outfits, the bathtub depression, the fact that he accepted the Renner hot sauce. I mean, he must have liked it, he's not the type of guy who would accept it on ceremony. It's just so much fun seeing somebody have so much fun and say things like, don't confuse being a thoughtless jerk with being honest, which shows introspection, but he also doesn't shy away from telling the truth and pretty much doing whatever he wants to do at all times. And that's one of the reasons Glass Onion works so well. We've seen some Blanc, and we know what we're getting for the most part. The shock of Craig's absurd accent is gone, and we get to see him just have fun playing off this absurdly stacked cast. As I said, Janelle Monet stands out as the star, but Kate Hudson's birdie also gets to have some of the best moments. Monet probably has the most challenging task of playing a character who's playing another character, and minus a few slip-ups of accent, which, let's be real, in a movie with Benoit Blanc, who's paying attention to that? She really pulls it off. On top of that, in her smash everything scene, she is a threatening, destructive presence, which is no small accomplishment for someone who's five foot nothing. It's not a perfect movie. Even I could admit the it's so dumb solution feels like a get out of jail free card because you can explain any poor writing choices away with that. For a one-off plot though, I'm great with it. Cause sure, we come here for the mystery, but seeing Blanc utterly exasperated at the lack of mystery was worth it. Can't wait to see where he ends up next time. But next week, we dance. <sighs> Promise, I have no ambitions for office. No ambitions for office. No ambitions for office. Well, hello there. I'm Lee Cinema Wins. You might know me from Cinema Wins. Although some of you might know me as Lestallion Stallion if you've got my show over at the unit, it doesn't really matter. Things in this country sure are a mess, huh? It seems like every leader these days is completely unqualified. So here's my question for you, America. If we're gonna elect unqualified leaders, shouldn't those leaders at the very least run their own moderately successful YouTube channel? That's why I'm running for office. Which office? Doesn't matter. Just an office, because eventually the algorithm is gonna screw me and nobody will watch my videos, and then what? Back to my old job? I don't think so. You can't make me. So it was this or start a cult and I literally flipped a coin. Look, I've made you reconsider some films that you otherwise thought were terrible, so why not reconsider your entire code of ethics and vote for me, Lee Cinema Wins? Because that's who I am, Lee Cinema Wins. My name is Lee Cinema Wins and I approve this message. And hey, I mentioned this in a community post, but we're doing a very limited run right now to see if people are interested in lifetime memberships to Nebula. So like no monthly or annual charge, you just pay once and then you have it forever. It's a way for us to raise some quick money to help improve the app. And if it's something that works for you, it's a huge help to us. There's a link for it in the description. I'm obviously gonna ask you to use my link because if you do, that's, that's like a huge, huge help to me. And without giving you the whole pitch, Nebula is our streaming service and basically you can watch all my videos without ads, without sponsor reads, uncensored, often early, sometimes a week early, sometimes even more than a week. And it's great, we're on our own now, so we're kind of funding everything ourselves. We're not taking any VC money, we're not letting anybody else buy any equity except for creators that are a part of it. So if it's something you're interested in, check it out.